Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and more. So today's video we are going to go over part sticking and mold. Um, this video is dedicated to Chris Clark. He's one of the guys I work with right now. He's a process technician. He watched one of my videos from four years ago where I did parts sticking in the mold and how I usually got that out, you know, by using tissue or whatever or these skills here as far as machine material and mold what what common ideas you could use on there to get them parts out okay guys so let's go let's jump right into this and see what we got here so on the machine side it says here decrease injection pressure okay decrease injection rate or adjust profile slower decrease pack and hold time Increase cooling or pause time, okay? So think about that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get it to where the cooling time, it lets it shrink to the core, okay? Increase your transfer position. So what you can do is you could pack it out more. Um, that's what they're saying here. Decrease barrel temperature. Decrease ejector speed or profile ejectors, okay? So the ejectors is what they're talking about is what ejects the part off, okay? Decrease clamp breakaway speed. So your clamp breakaway speed, let's say you have your cavity side and you got your core side. Your cavity side stays stationary and this side here is opening up to pull away from it. You want to have that breakaway in between there really slow and then open fast. So that could be one that can help you out there. Check that the nozzle orifice is smaller than the sprue orifice, okay? So this is a critical one. You always have your nozzle tip orifice always smaller than your sprue bushing orifice, okay? If you have it the same size as the sprue bushing or a little bit bigger, you're gonna get shear going into the tool, okay? You never want that or you'll get to where the the sprue wants to hang up inside of the sprue bushing and you'll never get it out of there, okay? So always think about this one too. Use air eject if possible. So some people use poppets, like air poppets and stuff like that to keep the parts from sticking. On the material side, now the material is a little bit different. You can use a lubricant material or a lubricated material, whatever they call it. So really the only lubricant that I know of that I've used in the past is I've used talc material. You can add like a talc into your material and blend it into it. And it's like a lubricant that actually helps it release as you're molding it, okay? On the mold side, decrease mold temperature, increase cavity half temperature, okay? So what they're asking there is, let's say you have the cavity side and you got the core side. Usually on the cavity side, on most tools, you'll run that hotter. You'll, you'll run it like 100, 110, 120. The back half, you usually run about around 70, 80 degrees, a lot cooler to where the part shrinks to this side and sticks to that side. So that's what you're looking for. Um, check mold for undercuts or burrs. So this is a big deal here because if you have any kind of tool damage or any kind of burrs on your steel, it can actually hold the part in there and you cannot eject it out. It might stick it to the cavity side, won't release it to the core side, okay? So you definitely want to keep an eye out for that. Um, use mold release in areas to find the issue. So what I usually do is, let's say you're running a part and it's been running for a while and you go over there and you're trying to look at this mold and they say, oh, it's starting to stick parts. Well, what you can do is you can take that mold release spray in certain areas like maybe spray in one corner here that you think it's sticking let it run a couple shots and see if it pulls let that mold release wear off then see if it still sticks you know what i mean in that corner that way you know what area of the mold to actually look at and see where the problem is so mold release is a good tool to use temporarily don't use it all the dang time everybody wants to use it all the time and think that's the fix to everything and it's not the fix to everything that is only to help you find the issue check uh check for balance melt flow on multi-cavity tools okay so think about that if you have a, a tool that's like that um <clears throat> 
getting into this area here. So sticking in the mold can be due to these issues here, okay? So overpacking. So everybody knows you can either overpack this by having too much pressure, injection pressure is too high, or underpacking excessive shrinkage, okay? So there's two ways it usually happens when it happens. You either short shot it and it doesn't pull it out of there, or you overpack it and you, and you like stick it right to the dang uh, cavity side. Insufficient cooling. So maybe there's not enough water going through the tool. It's got hot spots. It's not cooling to the other side like it's supposed to. Highly polished core surface or draw polish, okay? These are some things that actually have an effect on it. Insufficient knockout action. So think about their knockout action. What they're talking about is maybe have it eject real slow, then eject fast to get the part off because if you eject too fast, even if the part's stuck on the core side, now you're gonna push your ejector pins right through that. So think about that. It'll stick on the cavity side, and then it'll stick on the core side. I've had it on both sides. Most time, if it sticks on the core side, you're pushing the ejector pins right through it. It's stuck on there. Okay, so then you might have to do some draw polish. You might have to do some stuff like that to fix that issue, okay? Surface irregularities. Irregularity. Try to say that word a bunch of times, guys. In the mold. Irregularities. Irregularities. So I, it's a hard word for me to say. Insufficient core and wall tapers and then undercuts. So think about that, okay? I've done a couple tricks in the past. If you have issues, this is like old school. Most of your process techs that's been out there in the industry know how to do this where you take, maybe you take a piece of paper or tissue paper, you put it in the mold, you cover the, the, the part itself, you close up on it, do not go under tonnage, that way you don't damage anything. You just close it up and it'll pull the part off of there for you. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. 90% of the time that I've used it, it's, it's worked where it helps you pull the part off of that side. If it's on the core side, it's a different, different animal. It's only if it's on the cavity side. So if it's on the cavity side and it's stuck over here and you're trying to pull it to the core side so you can eject it off, use that paper, use tissue paper, whatever it is, don't lock it under tonnage, just pull it off. It'll take care of the issue for you. Now, if it's on the other side and you gotta run your ejectors through it, I've done this a hundred times in the past too. Eject your material out of your, out of your nozzle body or out of the nozzle itself, get a big clump of that plastic, get your glove, and then smear it onto the, the core side of the tool. Let it melt to that plastic, but let it harden up. Then use that to pop it back off of there, because well, now what it's doing is it's heating that plastic up, it's melting where the pins push through the tool. You can do that, and sometimes that actually works and it helps you get that part off of there. So try that the next time whenever you have an issue, either on the cavity side or on the core side, try that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks, Chris, for giving me this idea. Um, I really do appreciate it. If you guys would, please like, share, and subscribe down here in this corner. Um, it really does help the channel. It helps other molders out there find the channel. Um, give me some feedback on what you guys would like to see in the next video. Um, I do really appreciate it. Until next time, peace.